Alright, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. So today we're going to continue our chap syllabus, uh, chapter number one, uh, which is the topic is uh, we're going to cover is a central limit theorem and normal approximation to binomial distribution, right? Mm, so we already covered theorem one and the theorem number seven, right? So now look at theorem number eight. If x1, x2 until xn constitute a um, random sample from an infinite with mean mu and variance equal to sigma squared and the moment generating function is MT, uh, mxt then the limiting distribution of z is x bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n so as n our sample size approaching to infinity then we, we have a standard normal distribution so this is what central limit says lah central limit theorem says right for central limit theorem for sample taken from a non-normal population with mean equal to mu and variance equal to sigma squared by central limit theorem x bar is approximately normal distribution so uh, this is a repeated uh, explanation for uh, theorem number eight. So provided in sample limit theorem, provided uh, some book says that uh, sample size must be large enough. So some book suggest that n more than or equal to 30 to indicate the sample size is large. Right? Some books will say more than 50, some book will say more than 100 and more than 500. So it depends uh, what is the definition of uh, large. Right. So if you look at this one, if x bar equal to 1 over n, x1 plus until xn, right? So the expected of x bar should be equal to mu. And the variable x bar is equal to sigma squared over n. Right. So this is what uh, central limit theorem says lah. So now, um, we look at theorem number nine. Right. Theorem number nine says that. Uh, let w1 until wn be infinite sequence of independent random variable each of the following uh, each of the same distribution suppose that mean equal to mu and variance equal to sigma squared have a function f w w are both infinite so the the probability between a and b is said to be a normal standard normal distribution Sekejap lah, student. So now, example number one, a random sample of size n equal to 15, right, is drawn from the probability density function fy3, 1 minus y squared, where y is equal between 0 and 1. So let y bar is equal to summation of yi from 1 until 15 divide multiply with 1 over 15. So use central limit theorem to approximate probability of y bar between 1 over 8 and 3 over 8. Right. So first step, what we need to do is to find the expected value of y. Right. So to find the expected value of y, so since this is a continuous uh, random variable, right? So we're going to use integration from zero to one, right? So let me write clearly from zero to one. So y multiply with the PDF of y is three multiply with one minus y squared with respect to y right so this one going to be 1 over 4 so 
expected value of y is equal to mu. So by using central limit theorem, we, we know that x bar is having normal distribution with mean equal to mu and sigma squared over n. Right. And then second step to find the, the probability of y bar, we need to find the variance of y. So the variance of y is equal to expected value of y squared minus mu squared. Right. So expected of y squared, we need to integrate from 0 to 1, y power of 2, 3, 1 minus y squared with respect to y. Right. So this one should be equal, uh, this one minus 1 over 4 squared. Right. So can you calculate for me? I think the result should be equal to 3 over 80. Is it correct? Can somebody respond, correct or not? Or you can left yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, on group chat. You boleh tulis kat situ, group chat. Right. So since we already know the variance and uh, the mean of y, so step number three, according to central limit theorem, right? So the probability of one over eight y bar three over eight. So we're going to employ uh, the formula in theorem number eight. The theorem number eight says that when we want to co uh, convert uh, the probability value to the standard normal distribution, we use x bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n. Right. So this one going to be <clears throat> one over eight is our y bar minus mu. Our mu is one over Four. So this is the formula. So y bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n. Right. So because this is a standard error. Right. So this is uh, 3 over 8 minus 1 over 4. So 1 over 4 is our mu divided by our sigma is equal to, uh, this is going to be a sigma squared, right? So we're going to take the whole uh, square root. So 3 over 80 divided by, our sample size is equal to uh, 15, right? We have 15 observation. So divide by 15. So this is the same one. 3 over 80 divided by 15, right? So this one going to be the probability of Z. This is going to be Z, right? So this is the formula of Z based on theorem number 8. Right, so this is going to be 2 point, negative 2.5, and this one going to be 2.5. Right. So the distribution curve will lies. This since this is a standard normal distribution, right? This is going to be negative infinity to infinity, and the mean should be equal to zero. This is negative two point five, and this is two point five. So we want to find this area, right? So by using your standard normal distribution table, so this is going to be zero point nine eight seven six. So you need to refer to your statistical table.
All right. Let's move to the, another example. Are you okay? Let's move to the, another, another example. All right. Example number two. A soft drink vending machine is set so that the amount of drink dispensed is a random variable with mean equal to 200 milliliters. So we know that mean equal to 200 milliliters. And the standard deviation is equal to 15 milliliters. Right. <clears throat> so what is the probability that the average mean amount dispensed is a random sample of size n equal to 36 is at least 204 milliliter. So what we want to find is probability of let's say x, x bar at least means more than or equal to 204. Right. So by using a central limit theorem, we know that our mu, right, our mu is equal to 200, and the sigma is equal to 15, and equal to 36, right? So if we want to convert this to Z distribution, right? So this one going to be 200 for Two hundred four minus um, two hundred divided by fifteen over six. So Z is equal to X bar minus mu over sigma square root of n. So this is going to be one o one point six. Z is more than or equal to 1.6. So the area that we want to cover is, this is going to be zero, 1.6 is over here. We want to find this area, right? This is uh, infinity to negative infinity. So this is Z. So this is the probability that we want to find. So if you look at the statistical table, we will find that more than zero, uh, 1.6, it should be equal to 0. Point 0, 0.0546. So we apply in theorem number 8. Right? So I learned Tanya today. Where is the question? So how to know which theorem should be applied? In central limit theorem, we apply only theorem number 8 and 9. So theorem number 8 says that if we have a uh, if you have a, a large sample size, so it will approximate to standard normal distribution, right? So standard normal distribution, we need to find mu, which is our mean, and the, the standard error. Standard error is sigma over square root of n, right? So, and theorem number nine says that when we have a large number of sample size, then it will become standard normal distribution. This is the PDF of standard normal distribution. Macam mana kita tahu a large sample, so we use a limit n approaching to infinity. Right. So this is answer for example number two. Right. So if you notice that all the all example I give to you, will lead to the same solution. We are employing theorem number eight and nine. So now look at example number three. So don't worry, kalau you tak dapat tulis, uh, later uh, I will upload this video to YouTube. Lah. Right? And then the notes I will upload it into Padlet. Right? So you can uh, re-catch up balik. Right, so example number three, the lifetime of certain brand of electric bulb may be considered as a random variable with mean equal to, so mean equal to 1,200 hours and standard deviation is equal to 250 hours. So we want to find a, a probability using a central limit theorem 
that the average lifetime of 60 bucks, so we know that n equal to 60, right, exceed more than 1250. So we want to find probability of x bar, the average lifetime, more than 1250, right. So it's the same concept, right. We convert this one to z distribution. So 1250 is the the sample average minus mu, which is 1200, divided by sigma is 250 over square root of 60. Right? Always remember theorem number 8 x bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n. So this one going to lead us to probability of z more than or equal to more than, not equal to, more than 1.55. So if you table it into a normal distribution curve, it will be on the right hand side, 1.55. So we want to find this area. This is infinity, this is negative infinity. Right? So if you look at the statistical table, right? Table, statistical table for standard normal distribution, table number then table number four, right? Sorry, table number table number three, right? One point five five. It should be equal to zero point six zero six, right? Okay. So this is a simple example. Now look at uh, another example. I'm going to bring up another example. Uh, I'm, I'm going to skip example number four which, be, because this is the uh, same uh, procedure in, as in example number one, two, and three. Right. Now look at example number five. This is quite different because we have a poison variable. Right. So if x1 until xn are Poisson variable with parameter lambda equal to 2. So we know that from this uh, situation, we have a different uh, distribution, which is a not normal distribution. We have a Poisson variable. So we need to use central limit theorem to estimate the probability of Sn between 120 and 160. So which is Sn is equal to 1 plus x1 plus x2 until xn, right? And then uh, n is equal to 75, right? So, in this problem, we know that this is not x bar, right? Sn is not x bar. Based on example uh, theorem number 8, it says that when we want to convert z is equal to x bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n. So, this is the formula for standard normal distribution in the uh, theorem number 8. So, now, uh, since Sn is equal to x1 plus x2 plus until xn, so the expected value of Sn it should be equal to n mu, right? And the variance of Sn it should be equal to um, Variance of um, n sigma squared divide is equal to n sigma squared, and we know that from um, from Poisson distribution, Poisson distribution uh, expected of x is equal to lambda, and variance of x is also equal to lambda in Poisson distribution, right? So we know that from here, 
expected value of Sn is equal to N multiplied with 2. And variance of Sn is equal to N. This is N, uh, N squared, right? Uh, no, no, this is not N squared. This is N2 juga, benda yang sama lah, 2N. So then, Sn is having a normal distribution with N mu and N sigma squared. Right? And we know that N is equal to 75. So then, Sn is having a normal distribution with 75 multiplied with 2 and 75 multiplied with 2 is going to lead us to 150, 150. Right. So by using standard normal uh, uh, central limit theorem, so let me change the color. Um, right. So we want to find probability of uh, 120 as n 160. Right. So this is going to be probability of 120 minus 150 divided by square root of 150. This is a Z distribution. 160 minus 150 divided by square root of 150. So this is going to be probability of Z between 2.45 and 0 0.85. So by looking at the statistical table, if you can solve this one, you're going to be 0 0.7 866 right uh, how expected of sn become n mu right so this is x1 plus x2 until xn right we know that mean for a poisson distribution is equal to lambda and variance for poisson distribution also equal to lambda right so this one we can replace to lambda lah right so if you plus everything until n so it become n multiplied with lambda lah n multiplied with mu right so that's how we got n mu. So our lambda is equal to 2, right? So this is the answer. Right. Now we move to the next, the last topic in chapter number 1. Right. We're going to finish early for this topic. So far, do you have any question for this top, uh, topic, central limit theorem? Any question? If you have a question, you can uh, type in chat uh, column. Right? If you don't have question, then we move to normal approximation to binomial distribution. Right? So now, for normal approximation to binomial distribution, right, under certain circumstances, the normal distribution can be used as approximation to binomial problem. Right? So we already learned in uh, QMT161, right, we can approximate the discrete random variable to continuous random variable, uh, and kita belajar, which is uh, Poisson distribution and binomial distribution. right? 
So this is a kind of uh, repeated uh, knowledge, right? So why we use uh, abnormal approximation? Because we're going to save time of calculating the probability in binomial distribution when we have a large uh, sample size, right? So the advantage is less tedious uh, calculation to perform. So the central limit theorem can also be used to approximate the probabilities for some discrete random variable when the exact probability are tedious to calculate. So as I said before, we need, uh, when we have a large sample size and the calculation become tedious and we need to employ a normal approximation, approximation techniques. Lah. So of course, when we approximate from, when we change the distribution type from discrete random variable to continuous random variable distribution, sorry, distribution, right? So of course we need to have some correction because in discrete random variable, we don't have, we, we should, we, we, going, we have a gap between uh, first number to second number, right? In continuous random variable, we don't have any gap. So that's why we need to employ a correction for continuity, right? Correction for continuity is a correction employed when continuous distribution is used to approximate discrete distribution. So for example, let's say if you have, this is a binomial, right? I put a table, binomial, and we want to convert to normal. We want to use normal approximation. When we have probability of x equal to a, and this one we need to minus 0 0.5 and plus 0 0.5. So it become a minus 0 0.5 x a plus 0 0.5. So continuity for correction means we're going to add 0 0.5 and minus 0 0.5 from the constant value. So this is the first. The second one, when we have probability of x more than or equal to a, right? So before we go for that uh, part, we need to understand probability of x more than or equal to a is not equal to probability of x more than a in discrete random variable, right? In continuous random variable, probability of x more than or equal to a is also equal to probability of x more than a because it's a continuous, right? It doesn't have any different for continuous random variable, but for discrete random variable, there is a different. That's why uh, we need to add or minus 0 0.5. So this will become probability of x more than a minus 0 0.5. And number three, when we have probability of x more than a. So this one going to be probability of x uh, a plus 0 0.5. And number four, probability of x less than or equal to a. Probability of x less than a plus 0 0.5. And number the last one. Number five, probability of x less than a. Going to be probability of x less than a minus 0 0.5. So this is the rule for conversion from discrete random variable to continuous random variable using a correction for continuity, right? I think this is going to be, uh, I explained very well. You should, uh, uh, if you don't understand, you can raise the question, right? So now look at theorem number 10. If X is a random variable having a binomial distribution, so what is the binomial criteria? Binomial is a discrete random variable and we have two outcomes. Either yes or no, life or dead, right? Normal or not normal, right? 
And then we have a constant probability of success. Probability of success should be constant. The probability of success means probability of our interest, right? So it cannot be changed throughout the experiment. And then we have N trial. This is a characteristic for binomial distribution. If you're not clear, you should revise back QMT uh, 161, I believe, right? So the moment generating function of Z equal to X bar minus NP divided by square root of NPQ, right? We know that from a normal, a binomial distribution, mu, which is our mean is equal to NP and sigma squared is equal to NPQ. This is the variance. This is the mean for binomial distribution. Just a refresh back. So approach that the standard normal distribution is applied when N is very large. When we have a large sample of sample, uh, sample size, then we can use a normal approximation method using a central limit theorem. It becomes a standard normal distribution, right? As a rule of thumb, for normal approximation to binomial distribution, right? There are two methods, right? You can choose either method. So the Moif Laplace limit method, another one is the famous method is NP more than five and NQ more than five. So as a rule of thumb, the Muir Laplace uh, limit should all be used only if the magnitude of n and p are when n is more than 9 multiplied with p divided by 1 over 1 minus p and n is more than 9 multiplied with 1 minus p divided by p this condition met then you need you can use normal approximation if the, one of the met, uh, one of the condition is not met you cannot proceed with normal approximation right or the famous uh, method is NP more than five and NQ more than five. This is the uh, popular method, right? So now this is basically, uh, we refresh back our knowledge in QMT 161, right? So now look at example number one for this step, my topic. So, for this topic, example number one, Boeing 757 supplying certain route are configured to have 168 economy seat. Right? So, experience has shown that 90% of all ticket holder on those flight will actually show up in time. So, we have probability of success P is equal to 0 0.90, which is show, uh, the, the ticket holder will show up in time to board a plane. And the Q is 0 0.10, which is it will not show up. So knowing that, uh, suppose an airline sells 178 tickets for 168 tickets, a seat, right? So before we go further to answer the question, we need to identify what is the distribution for this uh, situation. So we have two outcome, either show or no show, right? So the 0 0.9 is show, right? 0 0.1 is no show. And then we have N equal to 178, right? Sell, the airline sell 178 tickets, right? For 168 uh, seats. So this is a binomial problem, right? So now, the question asks, All right. So what is the probability that not everyone, not everyone who arrive at a gate on time can be accommodated? So 
again we have p is equal to 0 0.9 n is equal to 178 we want to find probability of um, we want to find probability of people uh, showing up which is uh, which is we can accommodate uh, ticket for 168 which is sekarang kita ada 168 right so we want to know the balance balance uh, ticket yang dia jual tu boleh accommodate tak uh, 168 tu what is the probability so 169 x 168 right so now since let's say since we are in a, this topic uh, normal approximation let's check uh, whether we can use normal approximation method so n p is equal to uh, 178 multiplied with 0 0.90 so this one do, going to be how much eh? 0 0.9 multiply 178 is going to be 160.2 and np nq should be 178 multiply with 0 0.1 should be 17.8 so both a condition np is more than 5 and and q also more than 5 so we can based on this condition we can use normal approximation method right why 169 because we want to know uh, not everyone who arrive at the gate can be accommodated maksudnya we have 168 seat but the airline sell 178 seat so the balance is the, the, the balance is the the seat that we cannot accommodate kan so we want to know the the probability that we cannot accommodate the the ticket yang kita sell tu do you understand we have uh, 160 seat so tapi dia jual 178 so the balance is from 169 to 178 yang Kalau dia muncul pun, tak ada seat untuk dia duduk. Boleh faham? So, we want to know the probability not everyone who arrive at the gate on time can be accommodated. So, this one is the probability that we cannot accommodate the seat. 169 to 178. Right. So, then, by using theorem number 10, right, we're going to convert this to Z distribution. To find the probability right so z distribution for based on theorem number 10 it says that x bar a minus np which is our mu divided by npq which is our um our variance right so this one should be 178 minus np our np is equal to 160.2 this is 169 minus 160.2 right but you see now this is a binomial distribution we want to convert this to normal distribution so since we want to convert this to normal distribution we need to apply correction for continuity so this one going to be minus 0 0.5 minus 160.5 this is minus and this is plus 0 0.5 minus 160.5 so let me draw panjang panjang sikit bagi nampak so 169 minus 0 0.5 this is 160.5 z 
160.2, sorry, yeah, correct. This is 160.2. Right, this is 178 plus 0 0.5 minus 160.2. Right, we're going to divide the square root of NPQ based on theorem number 10. Based on theorem number 10, we're going to divide with uh, square root of NPQ. So this is going to be the square root of uh, NPQ is, let me write here, NPQ is 70, 178 multiply with 0 0.9 multiply with 0 0.1. So this one going to be 178, 16.1. 0, 0.2 is it right you just take 10% of 160 so this is going to be 16.02 this is a 16.02 right so this is going to be probability of 2.07 z and this is going to be 4.57 so we already convert this to uh, standard normal distribution. So the distribution curve will be from on the left, on the right hand side, kan? 2.07 and this one going to be 4.57. So this is the area that we want to find. So this is 0, negative infinity to infinity. So this is that. So when you use statistical table, table number 3, you will get 0 0.0192. So this is how we answer question regarding normal approximation to binomial distribution. Do you have any questions so far? So I have another two examples, then we out. We good to, uh, we will, I will leave you for flip grip. Right? Uh, ada, ada group yang kena buat flip grip, ada group yang kena buat uh, padlet. Right. So that is your uh, task. So now look at example number two. Right. It is given that 40% of the population support Gamboj uh, party. Gamboj party is uh, apa party ya? Eh? Party pakaian kah? Gamboj. I don't understand. Apa Cambodge party ni untuk apa? Uh, party kurta. Oh, kena pakai kurta lah. Alright. So, tak apa just to understand. Right. Um, so, 40% of population support Cambodge party. So, P is equal to 0 0.4, which is support. And Q is equal to 0 0.6, not support. Right? So we have two outcome. Uh, probability of success 0 0.4 and is equal to 150 member. So 150 member of the population are selected at random. Use suitable approximation to find a probability that more than 55 out of 150 support Gamboj party. So we want to know the probability of X more than 55. Right? All right. So since we're going to use a normal approximation, we need to test the condition and P is equal to 150 multiplied with 0 0.4 and NQ uh, 150 multiplied with 0 0.6. And this one going to be, um, this is going to be 60 and this is going to be 150, 0 0.6, 90, which is more than five. This is more than five. Right, so we can use normal approximation. Then 
for this problem, probability of x is more than 55. We need to convert this uh, to continuous random variable by using continuity correction. Probability of x more than 55 point, uh, plus 0 0.5. So this is going to be probability of x more than 55.5. So we convert this to a Z distribution, 55.5 minus uh, NP is equal to 60 divided by uh, square root of NPQ. So square root of, square root of NPQ is, NPQ is 150 multiplied with 0 0.4 multiplied with 0 0.6. This is going to be 36. So this is going to be 6. And this one, probability of Z more than um, negative 0 0.75. Right? So negative point zero point uh, negative zero point seven five is on the left hand side zero point seven five. This is the area that we want to find. The area should be more than zero point five. So this is going to be uh, zero point um, seven seven three four. So the value you can get from statistical table, right? Right, so far any question? So if you don't have question, then we move to the last example, which is example number three, right? So example number three says that a survey conduct on 1,500 university students, right? So we have N is equal to, no, Random sample of 200 students. So N is equal to 200. Capital N is equal to 1,500. Right? And in this statement, it says that 65% claim that they did not cheat in examination. So we have P is equal to 0 0.65, not cheat. And the Q should be 0 0.35, cheat. So we have two outcome. A probability of success 0 0.65 and 200 sample size which is n trial so this is a normal a binomial distribution so we want to find the probability of x less than 125 student did not cheat right so still under p is 0 0.65 so since this is a binomial distribution we want to convert to uh, continuous distribution. This one is going to be x might divide uh, less than 125 um, minus 0 0.5. So this one probability of x less than 124.5. So we're going to check using normal approximation, right? Because we have a large number of trial, 200, right? So that's why we use normal approximation method. So NP is equal to 200 multiplied with 0 0.65. Uh, um, so this one going to be how much? 0 0.65 going to be 130 NQ 200 multiplied with 0 0.35 is equal to 70. So both conditions are more than 5. So we can use normal approximation method. Right. So this one probability of Z less than 124.5 minus our mu is equal to NP which is 130, divided by NPQ. NPQ is equal to 200 multiplied with 0 0.65 multiplied with 0 0.35. So this one going to be 
45.5. So this is the square root of 45.5. So this one going to be z less than uh, negative 0 0.82. And if you look at the uh, probability distribution curve, negative 0 0.82 is on the left hand side. This is the area that we want to find. So this is going to be 0 0.1788. Right? Any questions so far? So I believe for, for that example, we finish chapter number one. 1,500 is our population size. 200 is our sample size. So based on normal uh, binomial distribution, we use 200 trial. 200 trial means 200 students for our uh, binomial problem. Right? Any questions so far? So, uh, for this uh, topic, I will print uh, this note and put it into Padlet. You can assess the Padlet by after this uh, meeting, this class. And then uh, this video, I will put into uh, YouTube, you can assess uh, this lecture again in YouTube, right? So if you have a question, you can rise now or you can put it into um, YouTube uh, comment, right? Or you can message me personally or in group, right? So I think uh, for this chapter, we finish.